Once Upon a Time. been thinking. This apple comes from a tree, an apple tree. And we're in the forest today and there are an awful lot of trees here. I was wondering if there was an apple tree. Can't see one. I think if one of these trees was an apple tree I'd be able to see some apples. Maybe another kind of fruit grows on these trees. I'll think of another kind of fruit. Ah yes. It looks a bit like an apple, but it's a bit more pear-shaped. It's a pear. I'll see if I can see any pear trees. I can't see any pear trees either. I don't think anything can grow on these trees. Ooh, something hard down here. It's a nut. It's a brown nut. This is a horse chestnut, although you might know it by another name, a conker. It was on the ground just down here. So that tree there must be a horse chestnut tree. Wonder if anything else grows on the trees around here. Have a look on the ground. Aha! Uh -huh. It's another nut. Yeah, it's a bit smaller than the conker. It's not quite so round. Looks a bit like an egg, doesn't it? In an egg cup. This kind of nut is called an acorn, and it grows on an oak tree. I wonder if you know what happens when the nuts fall on the ground. Sometimes they go into trees, but most times they're eaten by the animals that live in the forest. Sometimes there are so many nuts here on the ground that the animals couldn't eat them all at once. And one animal is very clever. He collects the nuts, hides them, and saves them. And then when winter comes and he can't find any food outside, he digs into his store of nuts. I wonder if you know what kind of animal does that. Likes nuts and collects them. He's got a long, bushy tail, and when he eats, he sits on his back legs with his paws like that, with a nut in the paws and nibbles like that. Good at climbing trees, too. They're usually grey, though sometimes you might see a red one. Do you know what it is? A squirrel. I'll see if I can make a squirrel with these shapes. <coughs> well, let's see. Let's start with the back legs. There we are. Good start. Let's work up That's the body. Put another bit of body just there. Another bit there. Let's have a head. Like that. Two ears, I think. One. Two, and a uh, little paw there. Ah, we need a tail, don't we? Nice bushy tail, like that. Let's see if we, we can make him eat the acorn. There we are, a squirrel. Today's story is about a squirrel, a squirrel that lived in a forest just like this one. And he liked acorns too, but he wasn't the only one who liked acorns. Once upon a time, there was a little pig who lived with his mother on the edge of the forest. One morning, his mother said to him, I think you're big enough now to go into the forest all by yourself to collect acorns and beech nuts. Off you go 
and take care to come home before dark. The little pig felt very proud to be allowed out all by himself. I can't play today, he called to his friend, the ladybird, as he hurried past. I've got important work to do. He looked hard at the different trees. He knew that acorns came from oak trees and beech nuts came from beech trees. And so he set to work, snuffling under the leaves on the ground, searching for the nuts that had fallen from the trees. And soon he started to collect lots of acorns and beech nuts, putting them into two neat piles. And as he did so, he grunted, an acorn for me, acorn for mother, a beech nut for me, a beech nut for mother. He was so happy and so busy thinking about how pleased his mother was going to be that he didn't notice that no matter how many acorns and beech nuts he collected, the two piles of nuts never got any bigger. And nor did he notice that up in the trees was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, greedy squirrel. But the squirrel had noticed the little pig and every time he put a nut down on one of his neat piles, the squirrel crept down, picked up the nut, and hurried back up the tree. Hmm. Another nut for me, and another nut for me, and another nut for me, <laughs> he giggled as he dropped the nuts into a hole at the top of the tree. After he'd been working for a long time, the little pig lifted his snout from the ground and looked proudly at his, at his pile of nuts. He was very puzzled. He knew they should have been much bigger than they were, and then he heard the squirrel giggling high above him. Ha, 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 he, 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 they're all up here at the top of the tree. <laughs> give them back, squealed the little pig. Oh, please give them back. But the squirrel just giggled and disappeared into a hole in the tree. And so sadly, the little pig set off home. On the way, he met his friend, the ladybird. What on earth is wrong, she asked. And the little pig told her. And then she whispered something into the little pig's ear and he began to laugh until tears ran down his cheeks. Oh, what a fine plan, he said. Oh, we'll try it out tomorrow. The next morning, the little pig went back into the forest. And when he'd nearly reached the place where the nuts had fallen, he began to run faster and faster, puffing and panting so hard it seemed he could hardly speak. Ho, oh, oh, ho, he squealed. It's coming. And out of the corner of his eye, he watched the squirrel listening at the top of the tree. Uh, uh, what's coming? asked the squirrel, who was also very nosy. It's got her black spots, said the little pig. Black spots, said the squirrel. Yes, and six legs and black wings as well, said the little pig. The squirrel looked alarmed. Oh, her black spots and six legs and her black wings, he said. And it's red too, said the little pig. Red like fire. Well, that was too much for the squirrel. He turned and he fled through the forest. Oh, look out, look out, there's a monster in the forest. It's got six legs and black spots and wings and it's red like fire and it's coming. Run, quick, run. And he ran so fast through the treetops that he knocked down showers of acorns and beech nuts on the ground beside the little pig. And the squirrel was so frightened, he never went back to that part of the forest again, which was just as well. For if he had, he might have seen the little pig rolling on his back laughing as he played with a monster that had black spots and six legs and black wings and that was red like fire. It was his best friend, the ladybird. It wasn't very nice for the pig, was it? Losing all those nuts when he worked so hard to collect them. I don't think I'd like anything like that to happen to me, even if it was only meant to be a joke.
Let's have another look at the pictures in today's story. Served the squirrel right, didn't it? I don't think he'd have run so fast if he'd known it was only a ladybird. The ladybird wasn't very big, but she helped the little pig. Big and pig. Those two words sound alike, don't they? I'll see if I can think of any more. Big and pig. Dig. Big pig dig. Wig. Uh, jig. The little pig went out to dig, and when he did, he lost his wig. I'll do a jig, said the little pig. And when he did, off came his wig. I think my wig's a bit too big, said the little pig. Well, I shall have to be going now. But I'll see you again soon. I expect there's a squirrel up there now. You like to have these nuts. Bye now. Take care.